hi guys and welcome to my channel please don't forget to like this video and of course subscribe to this channel um thank you for all my returning subscribers i have seen that the numbers are growing and i really appreciate that and if this is your first time seeing me um please join our family so on this specific video i want to talk about how your trial lesson should look like in order for you to retain more of your students or to make sure that they keep coming back to you as a tutor so this is about esl and if you are interested in teaching english online i would suggest you get a tefl certificate and start applying um so the first thing that you should do on your trial lesson is introduce yourself and when you introduce yourself this is a it's more of a, a model on how the um the, the student should also introduce themselves so you should take it slow so for instance i would say my name is Vuyo and I come from a small town um, in South Africa called East London. I enjoy gardening, um, I enjoy going to the beach and I love politics. So this is obviously for your more, old, more older students. So they will model how you introduce yourself. But of course, some are comfortable with English. They will tell you about their families and everything. So it is obviously all up to them. And from how they introduce themselves, you can also um, pose questions to them. So if they say they are from Spain and all of that, you can ask how is the weather now, just to gauge where they are in terms of the English language. and also listen to some grammar errors that you guys should work on in the future and when you are having this um, trial lesson also give feedback to them so let's say you're done with the segment of introduction then you would say uh, i'm happy with how you introduced yourself um, but um, i could see maybe you had a shortage of vocabulary so I think maybe in our future lessons we can do some vocabulary on how people introduce themselves okay cool so secondly um, have some simple get to know you questions so these get to know you questions are not the ones that we see on Instagram I use the questions from IELTS exams so they will have like a a specific topic like maybe we'll talk about the hometown um, them growing up uh, art galleries um, just information in general so the first part of these questions they will answer in one or two sentences so for instance um, do you guys uh, are there a lot of foreign films playing in your country so they'll say yes um, there are a lot of uh, foreign films playing maybe at the cinema and on Netflix but I personally enjoy watching them in my language and then you proceed to another question like um, so let's say you're talking about films and then you talk about um, so do you watch english content um, using uh, subtitles or you just um, try to listen engage what um, it is saying and also ask about their ch childhood like did they watch a lot of tv when they were growing up so from other countries like countries from the soviet union they didn't watch a lot of um, international programs so that's why they are learning english and then from their answers, you'll be able to gauge, of course, where you should help them. That is the first part of um, the questions. And sometimes I do use an online dice. Like if the students send me a message like, no, I just want to chat with someone, then I'll get some 
random questions from the internet and use that online dice for them for the dice to choose the questions for them and they enjoy that because it's like risky or whatever it's like gambling so those questions include like what superpower would you want to have if you had the opportunity to be a super uh, superhuman and the questions like um what do you think about the politics in your country like some fun questions and also some serious questions it all depends on the student that you are dealing with and at the beginning of the year i'll also have like um do you have resolutions for this year or do you believe in resolutions at all okay so the second part of the questions is more of presentation kind of questions so i'll pose um them on a, a question for them to present um to me for two minutes so they have to try to speak for two minutes like the i exam so maybe i'll ask them how was your experience with traveling abroad you understand so they will i'll give them a minute to prepare and then they will try to speak for two minutes and they also enjoy this because now they are challenged to speak english and they get to see oh i really need these lessons or i really do not need these lessons but most cases it's the first one like i really need these lessons because i cannot carry an english conversation on my own so i need to take these seriously so when we're done with the questions i'll put in um, a fun element to it so we'll have some youtube videos some fun youtube videos Sometimes I take videos from friends, the, the sitcom friends, and then we watch it maybe for three minutes, and then I'll ask them questions about friends. Have you watched friends before? What was the clip about? What did you understand? What did you not understand from the clip? And then, thirdly, I'll put in a paragraph with a lot of errors, right? This is, this is for reading and checking if they're able to pick up um, errors when they are writing essays or writing to me. So I'll put in a paragraph with a lot of grammatical errors and um, give them a chance to read it and also identify the errors. And then we, they will try to identify the errors and share with me what they have picked up once they have done that i move on to the next slide i use powerpoint with the correct way on how to write that paragraph so that they can see oh i got this and this right but i didn't pick up on this error or i picked up on all the errors so which means my grammar is good and then I will also include an activity on intonation because tone in English is also important um, that you use the correct tone to send the correct message. So we listen to some um, phrases or people speaking. There's an activity online on intonation that I, I always use and then they will tell me is this person maybe happy sad or surprised it is a bit tricky so they sometimes they will have to listen to the audio two times before they determine how this person is feeling and it also shows them when you have for instance a high pitch to something or your sentence it means you're happy but if you're using a more low frequency it could be that you're sad or you're not really excited about something and they should know that intonation in english is also in very important um if then we have time i always have some common uh, phrases or english phrases that i go through with them so if it's a business english student i'll use some business buzzwords that are new in, in the business environment 
and if it's a beginner i'll introduce them to some english phrases that are used on the day to day so things like um um, I haven't seen you in ages or I'm over the moon or I'm feeling blue. Those simple phrases for them to express themselves. And then they can also um, practice those for homework as well. So when uh, to wrap up my trial lesson, I will give them feedback on where they should work on. It's either grammar, um, vocabulary, or just in, in general exposure to English. So I would probably say watch more YouTube videos with people speaking in English. Try to read English books, even if it's children's books, so that you will uh, accustom yourself with English. So that's basically how my try lesson is set up and I am fortunate to have a lot of uh, the ability to retain new students because of this um, breakdown of my lesson and I hope that you will use it for your own lessons and it will be successful as it is to me and again thank you for watching this video please leave your comment on the comment section and share with us how your trial lesson is and some pointers that we can also use as fellow um, teachers or tutors and don't forget to subscribe like this video and i'll see you in my next video peace and love bye